Tees High Performance Center playing against Old Georgians. The under 20s High Performance Center had a very good game against the Old Herarians. Uh, unfortunately, weren't able to win it in the end, losing it to a try in the last minute. As we see Old Georgians with the kickoff playing from left to right on your screen and the High Performance Center playing from right to left in the green and white hoops. Unfortunately, the restart goes straight out of play, um, which means it gives um, the under-20s the chance to counter, have the start in centre field and to create a very good um, platform to build on. Let's see if they can keep up their, their fitness, their intensity, what they showed in the first 20-25 minutes and see how OGs will handle it and how they will manage the game. Because what we saw yesterday was OH, they managed the game very, very well. And we'll see if Sean was able to um, have a chat with his players, see how they can do their game management. As we see OGs with a very big shove, but um, unfortunately done illegally and not placing the ball down straight away gives High Performance Center the quick tap, 10 meters up. That's Ben Chang with the ball carrying it up, passing it out to 14, tries the dummy run, gets through the first tackle. Good interplay here by um, the under-20s. Taking it into contact now is the big boy. Setting up that truck. Uh, no sort of comp uh, competing by OGs as we got a penalty advantage for not rolling away. Spreading it out to the wing. He's able to keep it in field here. Setting up that truck. We can see that OGs are not, not committing that many numbers to the rucks, but uh, coming back for the penalty, it will be interesting to see how. Um, uh, it will be interesting to see how the sports club will do. The high performance centre. As you see, they're going to go for poles now, and I'm joined in commentary here by Terira. Terira, how are you? I'm good, Ian. Now, uh, nice to be back here. Day two of the Net Bank Challenge. And it's the young boys going up against the big boys again, isn't it? Yeah, so are we going uh, the same as last time? I'll go, I'm going to be supporting the boys. Uh, I know a couple of them, so I've, I've got to back them. Or should I go for my rugby club? Oh, geez. <laughs> now, let's switch. This time I'll go for the under 20s. <laughs> you go for OGs. Oh, OK, perfect. I'm, I'm happy with that decision. Um, I've always supported OGs uh, in all these tournaments. Um, so, yeah, we see the under 20s going for the penalty. I think it's a very good decision. Two minutes in, they were on the front foot. They were getting the momentum, but now it's just time to get the scoreboard ticking. Yep, and that's exactly what you want to do early on in a game. And they slot it right through, does Benoni Nekaira. So, 3 0 up to HPC, making their intentions very, very clear. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a, a, a good one this and obviously the one coming after this Ian, an even a bigger occasion. I mean, th that derby is unbelievable. Yeah, I think that's the biggest derby in Harare right now, uh, OH Sports Club. And do you think that's basically the final? or Because I know OG has got a very big score also and we've got to see that um, as we see there's a penalty here for tackling in the air or taking the player out. Another quick tap here by the scrum off. But uh, a little bit isolated, trying to put it to the boot. Yep, a little bit isolated indeed. And uh, Carlos Matema Tema has it now. He's got lots of sevens experience behind his um, back there. But uh, not the best of kicks. OGs do well to get it back. And uh, in the thick of things is Carlos. Oh, look at that stocky number three. My goodness, imagine him running at you full throttle. I would get out the way. I won't lie. Um, as we see, our OGs are, are trying to swing it down. They're getting caught in possession. Uh, how do you see this game starting off so far? Uh, so far, I think uh, it's early on in the game, uh, Ian, but uh, HPC will want to just continue asking questions here of old Georgians. Very experienced players in that uh, side, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, most of the Sevens uh, national players are there. They've been working hard in the academy. So fitness, I don't think, will be a problem here for all Georgians. They can uh, stand uh, head head to head here with the under-20s who've had a lot of rugby in the past uh, two months or so. 
Um, but yeah, the under 20s went down to Old Herarians yesterday. They took some brilliance from um, Takutzwa Musingwini in the dying seconds of the game there. Uh, he dotted down a try to, to win it for them. And HPC for them, obviously they'll be disappointed about the loss, but for them it's more preparation for what's to come. Uh, touring in April and obviously with the Partiers Trophy coming up and possible qualification to the Junior World Trophy, which would be an absolute um, achievement for, for Sean D'Souza and his boys. Um, so yeah, all Georgians obviously want to get the, the victory here. Um, they won't want to go down to the high performance uh, squad um, HPC here, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how this continues to, to pan out. Um, obviously still early on in the game. Just getting those um, early match jitters out the way and hopefully we'll see some nice running rugby here, Ian. You know, left to right, forwards doing their jobs, back lines. That, I like that exciting rugby. Yeah, and I, I, uh, looking at the scrum, I think the both packs are quite well balanced. Um, OG's very dominant yesterday against the Pit Bulls, scoring quite a few tries. I think that's, those are valuable points in how the trophy is going to fan out here. So I think in this game and the next game, whoever gets the most tries will probably win it. Yeah, brilliant. A uh, loose pass there from the HPC. They have to do some scrambling. Good pressure being applied there by old Georgians, but uh, they do well to, to recover the ball. Panache is now looking for a first receiver. Looking to ship it out early. As we see them setting up the ruck here, going left to right, left to right, and then making the break here down the field. Ooh. Big bounce there uh, by the youngster on his uh, on the counterpart. On the captain, Kuda Chuanza. He won't like that at all. No, no, no. Not at all. I mean, the tackle technique there, a little bit wrong. Most coaches will tell you, leading leg, leading shoulder, he was a bit flat-footed. and um, He got sent flying there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That uh, bus was certainly full. I'm going to laugh at him when I see him at touch on, on Monday. I, th um, I think it was uh, Ryan Musumi, actually. It wasn't Kuda Chiwanza. Oh. Kuda's wearing a scrum cap. Ryan Musumi, that's a sevens player. They're getting uh, put on his bottom by a, a, a youngster. Yeah, but I think there was a little bit of a size difference on the <laughs> on the youngsters uh, back there. But, yeah, that was a very good play. And look, they've got another penalty um, and going for the points. And yep. as mentioned in the previous games with Gary, you get your three, four penalties, you're already 12 points up. And that's two tries, basically. Yep, absolutely. And it's, it's a good call, I think. It's a good call. Take the three. Because if he slots this, it's now six points on the board. And... Old Georgians will need to get back into it somehow. But uh, like the like like what happened yesterday, Ian, HPC started the first half very well. And then OH just managed the game a lot better. They, they were never out of it at all at any point. And in the end, taking it there. But uh, I think they'll learn lessons from that. And I hope that they will be shown now the lessons in this game, that they just need to continue applying that pressure. Yeah, I had a good chat to Sean this morning. He said he was up late analysing the OG's game, analysing his game. So I think he's going to be implementing something, some new stuff, I think, because of the OG's plays a very different game. As we see the penalty going over, which takes the uh, points to 6-0. Yeah, very good kick there. I don't know why he has to kick it so high. Jeez, that went over the uprights, like way over. Haven't you ever seen where it goes over and it's gone through, but... Because it's gone so high, the ref can't give it. He's like, I, I don't know if that went through or not. Yeah, the, the assistant referees, they were looking right up in the sky um, at that one. But a great contest. The OGs get the ball back. They've got the penalty advantage. Really fronting up physically um, are the HPC boys. They're not going to die wandering here. Look at them at the breakdown. Really causing some problems there. But they did knock the ball on, so it'll be a scrum down. And... Uh, OGs will want to use this now. It's a good field position for them to launch an attack. You can see a lot of the, uh, quite a few of the under twenties boys are a lot bigger than the, the the men's side for OGs. So it is it is balancing out the pack size. Um, you would have expected a little bit of um, size to be on the men's team, but uh, this this under twenties team is looking good. 
Um, OG is here with a good uh, platform to build off to give it to their li their line, who are very very dangerous. As you said, three or four cheaters players in that thing in the back line. So hopefully we can see some creativity uh, coming from the scrum. As going going throughout the day, the first two games handling was the one that let let a lot of the teams down. They weren't as fluid as they, they should have been. Um, what do you think that's because of? Um, I think uh, I think it's the first hit out for most of these guys of the of of the of the year. Um, so they'll be just wanting to you know get the cobwebs off if I if I can call it that. Uh, but it, it's it's tough out there. Seventy minutes of of rugby is no joke. I'm sure there's some sore bodies. Quick turnaround from yesterday as well, Ian. I mean, these guys were playing less than 12 hours. They're playing again. It must be hard on the bodies. Eh? Especially in the 15s game. Sevens, you can understand. You can play because mm. that's it's still very physical, and mm. you've got to be a lot fitter for that for sevens. This is more uh, dynamic. So you got you hit, you mm. tackle, you run the ball, and you scrum, uh, ruck. Whereas sevens, you can try and keep the ball up. You you don't go into contact as much mm. as in a, a 15s game. But we saw from there, the OGs with a very good plan move, but pass not going to hand there, just behind the player's back, mm. uh, causing the knock-on. Yeah, but I, I, I guess that, that's the reason why all these uh, squads may, uh, named like 30 people in their teams. So it's because of that. So I think a lot of the people who... We're on the bench yesterday, starting this game, and vice versa. Um, Full-arm penalty there. That uh, weight difference telling there. There's an HPC player down. He's getting up now, but those that front row is massive from OGs. Yeah, and interestingly, in the previous two games, we didn't see a lot of scrum penalties. And straight away, he had second, third scrum that's gone down, penalty. So I think... Oh, it's a pity that Gary isn't in here because I think that's talent, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, fast talent letting me and Gary down today. Uh, but I'll take uh, me and Ian. That's, that's not bad. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. Such a gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> oh, brilliant kick by Ryan Mushumi into the corner there. Um, what you fancy here, Ian? I think it's going to be a maul. Maul over. Um, but I, I, I have a feeling they're going to set the maul and HBC is going to try and counter it and if it doesn't work it's going to go straight to the line as we see um, the players coming in here uh, looked like they were about to throw in but um, talent had something to say about it so they've reset it as you see it might be a four ball four ball gets it not clean ball HBC are able to kick it to clear their lines and a very good kick here taking it into the 10 meter sounded like that hit someone Right on the noggin, I hope they're okay. I think that went into the uh, Zim Rugby tent, uh, uh, where they're selling all the nice merchandise, the Zim Rugby shirts, uh, some of the warm-up kits. Those uh, are pretty nice, eh? Yeah, I th I'm thinking of getting one after this. Can you give me one too, bud? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what on. do I get in return? You'd have to give me a Chevron's shirt. A Chevron's shirt or a Zambezi lager later. Ooh, that, that's a tough choice. <laughs> I think I'd have to go for Chevron's because um, they're playing Netherlands on Tuesday. Yep, I was actually following at the moment the Zim 11 are playing Netherlands in a warm-up match at Old Orarians. Netherlands were batting first. They had a very good start. Not too sure what it's like now, but Netherlands, uh, I reckon, are going to take a hiding from the Chevron's. Sikanda Raza's back. Ryan Bill's back. Blessing Muzarabani's back. And this ball has gone all the way back in the Ingle area. <laughs> all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like like going back to the Netherlands squad, I know it's a different sport, but mm -hmm. it's still Zim. Um, the, uh, Coach Dave Houghton has named a very, very strong squad. Yeah. Uh, you look at uh, Sekunda, you look at Ryan Bill, Craig, he's back. Gary Balance is in there, mm -hmm. Blessing. Um, Richard yeah. Garawe, we had full strength. Yeah, we had mm. full strength. This is probably our best team mm. we've had in, this year. Yeah. Um, don't take anything away from like the Bangladesh tour and the India tour because there was no blessing. Yeah. But now this is probably our, our very good team. Yeah, it's, it's actually a blessing that blessing's back. <laughs> There's me struggling <laughs> with my English and going with these bad puns, eh? <laughs> well, 6-0 here. 
to the HBC side started well, like they did yesterday. This time, I think they'll they'll, they'll really want to get that win eh? over OGs. Nice win in the bag for them, and uh, as they prepare for a tough year, Carlos Matema Tema. They don't want to give him too much space. He can play that boy. Not too sure about that option, eh? Again. I think it's going to work out. Oh, nearly, nearly, nearly. Oh. A little bit too much um, pace on the ball. I think he had yeah. quite a bit of porridge Just, this morning. Yep, overcooked it a bit. <laughs> overcooked it a bit. Um, but you, uh, w something I'm going to point out here is OGs are going to play with a lot more flair than how OH played. And I think that's uh, going to be an interesting thing for the under-20s to try and cope with. Because mm. you see that OH, they controlled the game very well. Whereas OGs want to have that open, flair rugby game. Um, what sort of game plan did you assess from HBC last yesterday? So they tried to... They tried, they, they, they'd tried. love running rugby. That's what they want. They want to get the ball out to their Edward Segalkes and the Gorogodos. And, you know, that's what the, the kind of rugby they, they want. Like, as we see now there. And Alex Nyamunda, the crash. Oh, thank you very much, he says. Oh, offloads it. And you see the running rugby. Unfortunately, they knock it on. But that's, as I said, Ian, they do it. That's the kind of rugby Sean wants to play. Uh, and all blacks like rugby, if I can say. But he was also saying how he wants to try and mix up things. So you have the kicking game strong. Have the tactical game strong. Territory, everything. And I think they're well on their way. That was a nice little set play there. Yeah, that was a good uh, play out from their half. But... You can see that the, the bigger centers are getting over that game line. OGs have got the flare centers, the smaller ones. But uh, HBC, I think Sean has noticed something, saying, OK, we're going to use the, the bigger boys to crash up, to target these guys, to get over the game line, break the tackles, then go for the offload. Sadly, that offload didn't go to hand. But, yeah, I think we're going to see, instead of going from the eight, I think Carlos is going to pass it out and there's going to be a backline move. Oh, he's a bit nice. Oh, <laughs> why did he pass it? I thought he was through there. But anyway, tackled. Carlos Motema. Tema will be looking for options. Carlos has gone into the ruck, actually. So number 12 has to come and do the halfback. Judy's not breaking the gain line at the moment, but oh, there's some big oaks in that forward pack. Yo. Yeah, for sure. Eh? Um, but look at that. A lot more quicker ruck speed here from OGs. Um, Good clean out. The under-20s are also sort of targeting the rucks again. As you see, Kuda on the ball, getting his nice grubber kick in, and oh. he's over. What a player. That was very good. Very smart, putting it onto the boot and chasing his own kick. Showing his experience, isn't he? That is straight out of uh, the Kuda Chiwanza rugby book. Um, I'm sure he's done that many a time. Spotted space behind. He could have made the pass, but the experience and the individual brilliance, just too good. Kuda Chiwanza, you beauty. Yeah, I think he was very smart not to go out wide because you could see they were closing that space onto the, getting too close to the touchline. And instead, took the risk to the boot and got it back and nearly bounced over him. I won't lie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but still managed to gather it and then a simple dot down. Um, surprisingly, no covering behind from the under-20s there. Yeah, I think they were just caught uh, napping there out wide. Um, but uh, Kuda, that was just brilliant. I love it. it. It's nice when it works out. Eh? When it doesn't work out, if you had uh, put too much on it or too little on it, it was just a perfectly weighted kick. Such good, such good rugby. As we wait here for the conversion... Is it going to go over? Very sweetly struck, but no radar working at the current moment. So it's a one-point game now. And we, we've just, we have to look at this again, Ian. Kuda Chiwanza, when the ball got to him, have a look at him in the black scrum cap there, watching play. He knows the ball's going to come. He's got the man running on the right. He's got an inside pass as well. But look, swamped by five of the HPC players. He just puts it to the boot. Little dink in the gap there. Chases it up well, dots it down. He gets up as if he's like, yeah, that's, that's just what I do. But that's very clever. You're surrounded by five people, so I'd rather kick the ball away so you don't get tackled. Then they got to now backtrack to get to the ball. As you see, the Kickoff coming out, nice hanging kick here. OG is able to um, recover it, setting up the ruck, passing it out to the forwards, or deciding to go a little bit laterally here, getting the offloads in the tackles, passing back, and as to the try scorer, Kuda, Kuda with a nice step, but runs straight into the player. 
Almost did a roly poly there in the tackle. <laughs> oh, he's through. That's not good defense from the HPC boys. Oh, out the back door. Number seven collects. He knocks oh. it on though. Oh, OGs are getting are beginning to play some lovely rugby here, Ian. That is frustrating. <laughs> you, you're playing so well. Yes, the first one went out the back door. Next player running with it in one hand. The uh, under 20s player knocks it on out of his hand. And HBC with the scrum. And, but as you said, OGs are upping their flair, upping their, their gameplay. Um, straight to the big man. I, I felt they were going a bit too lateral. And then it's just getting that contact offload, getting that contact offload, which is now moving the game line further and further and further. Yeah, but you can see those tired legs. Eh? Panache Zuse is fit, but he's like, oh, it's been tough. 70 minutes of rugby yesterday and another 70 minutes today is tough on the bodies. And it's not like they were um, slow games. They were very physical. You, you constantly getting to the rucks, getting the hits, and now you've got to come back 12 hours later and do it all over again. Yeah. Very tough. So scrum down. If he had hung on to that ball, there was surely a try coming there from old Georgians. Unfortunately, um, probably felt like a bar of soap in his hands. Just slipped out there as he was falling to ground. But uh, danger warning signs here for HPC. Uh, but at least they get to address these defense issues here. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I've got a question for you. Yeah. What did you think of the Ireland-England game yesterday? Um... Uh, cricket? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously. Well, congratulations, Ireland. Thank you. Um, but uh, don't get your hopes too high for the World Cup. Never um, really do. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That was fantastic. England are not... Uh, but I think it's it's the right time to be losing for England. They've got the, they're going to need to fix it before the World Cup. But uh, I've been saying to all my friends and people who have been talking to me about Rugby World Cup, watch out for the French at home. They're, it's going to be very tough to get past them. Oh yeah, for sure. And there is a very tough group that we've got to talk about after this gameplay. As you see it getting swung out to Ben Chang, oh. passes it back into the little scrum oh. off, but unfortunately knocks it on. I think we're going to go back for a penalty advantage. But going back to that uh, Rugby World Cup, mm -hmm. you've got Scotland. You We're got playing South good rugby at the moment. You've got South Africa. Can never ride off the box. And you've got Ireland all in one pool. And you got, one of them has to go home. Gonna be, it's going to be Scotland. You're, you're right. After the, how they played in the Six Nations. Uh, Duhan van der Merwe. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the, a couple of the South Africans played in the Six Nations. Yeah. No, you know what? My, my gut feel is Scotland are probably the ones who, with the tougher ask. You, you can always back the box. The Irish are in just sublime form. The box will bring the physicality that I don't think the Irish and the Scottish uh, players will match. Those guys are just physical, brutal. Um, at scrum time, at ruck time, just the physicality of the box, I think, is, is, is... But it's nice to see that South Africa and New Zealand are not in the same pool for once. <laughs> it wasn't that like three <laughs> rugby World Cups in a row? Exactly. Jeez, I was just like, oh, nice for a change. But then I'm like, oh, maybe they should have been because they were the two guaranteed. Now it's not guaranteed for any of those three sides, uh, Ian. Yeah, for sure. All it takes is one bad day in the office and you could be going home. Yep. Uh, but yeah, uh, congratulations to Ireland. Um, shipping it out nicely here, HPC. Oof. Oh, great offload. That was a gang tackle there on the young man. But he does well to present the ball. Actually offloaded it in contact there. Panache looking for Nakairo there, linking up there. The second line was there, but there's not much pace. Is it the tired legs, Ian? Or? Oh, the big man, show and go. I don't think it's really the tired legs. I think it's just they're playing a more forward-orientated or game at the moment. Because uh, you can see they, they're giving it to the forwards. You're bossing the OGs players at the moment. Very nice passage of play here from the HPC under-20s. They've gone like 40 meters upfield, interchanging passes. Long pass there to Nakairo. Ships it out to the left. He should have gone on the outside, but he decided to cut in back into traffic. But they're playing under penalty advantage. That is some good rugby that they've played. From deep in their own half, look where they are now. Not a single kick. I love that rugby. Yeah, and it seems like there's something happening here with um, talent doing the double blast of the whistle. There might have been something that was seen by the AR so, could have getting called into the headmaster's office right now. And I think it might have just been something, because I saw Kuda was chatting to the AR at the previous track about something that was coming up. 
Yeah, so Kudaj so. is going to have a chat with his boys. The experience there of talent. Um, just having captain, go chat to your boys. Um, I'm not going to take any, any any of that. You know, one thing I like about talent, he always wants to get better. You know, he, having a chat with him, he always watches footage of his riffing. He wants to just get better and better. And the way they support each other, her and Precious are always supporting each other. Precious goes, ta talent posts, well done. I just love that team team effort. And I, and I think it's good for our Zimbabwe referees to have Precious and talent, especially uh, around. And I hope they're really um, instilling it onto the youngsters, the up-and-coming refs. Mm. Um, those who are not as experienced as them, as we see HBC, just ticking the scoreboard over here slowly, slowly. Every opportunity to go for three points, they're going to take it. Yep, and I think it's the right call. Uh, get points on the board. OGs have shown that uh, they can punish you from open play and even at set-piece time. So important kick here for Nakairo Benoni. Um, he's done well. I hope he doesn't hoof it next door because he is kicking them. Look, why kick it so hard? Has that not gone over the jewel? <laughs> I think it has. So <laughs> somebody's got to phone Royal and get them to come and kick it back over. Oh, dear. But as we see... Uh, yeah, on the screen there, that was Huntley. And he was the head boy of Hellenic last year. Um, very good player. He was part of that team that... Um, beat Falcon in the den. So not, that wasn't a very happy day for me. <laughs> Ex-Falcon boy. Oh uh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Even Kuda wasn't happy about it. <laughs> well, they let that ball bounce, the HPCs. Never let a rugby ball bounce because uh, it fell right into the oh, good hands there from Sumi. Uh, one pass and it's a try. Oh, he hangs on to it. Does he score it? Oh, oh my word. Ian, can you believe it? Sorry, I just have to get my breath back. I am. I don't know what to say. All you have to do is put ne the ne ball neither down. Neither do I. Um, <laughs> or pass it. You should have just passed it. I remember there was a sevens game where the guy placed the ball on his own foot and then no knocked it on over the try line. He, there was nobody around. He placed it on his own <laughs> foot. Ah. <laughs> uh. But uh, credit must be given to that uh, defense, though, because if it wasn't for that tackle, he may have dotted it down. So never, never give up in defense, and brilliant outcome there for HPC. There have been quite a few uh, try-saving tackles over the uh, couple of days, and that is probably going to be the second best one. The best one was the Matland game. Um, number three, chasing down sort of like a center, getting the cover tackle in and forcing the knock-on. The running it, oh, Muchengeti does it again. Great pass out. Going to send it out the back door. Flick. Take it up into contact. Gets a pass back in. A little bit of a wayward pass. Um, is that Ben Chang? He was taken down very hard there. Recycling. They're going to take it up to the forwards again. Good pass in contact. Nice handoff there. I can see you just sitting there and just admiring this. You don't have much to say at the moment. They're so gutsy, hey, these under-20s. So gutsy. I mean, you fend an oak like almost twice your size and send them onto, onto the ground. is phenomenal strength and uh, ability to fend there. But uh, penalty blown against them. Wanted to take it quickly. But uh, Talon says, you're not on the mark, fella. Come back. So penalized for holding on there. So it's actually the young Musumi, not the older one. I noticed the older Musumi is on the bench. So that's his young brother. He's the one who was kindly asked to sit down a little earlier. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> yes. I, but you can see that um, the number six from OG is handed off. He wasn't too pleased about that. Went in for a big tackle and forced the turnover. <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't love to be uh, handed hand off by anyone and land on my bum. It's a bit humiliating. And then the crowd does that whole you thing. It's happened to me a couple of times, um, but in my defense, he was uh, 125 kgs, <laughs> 2 meters 10, and there's me, um, 170 uh, centimeters, uh, 98 kgs. So, you know, was it the best uh, sort of experience? <laughs> Sorry, Ian. <laughs> I just ended up watching the stars. As you said, going, playing out to the left wing, bringing it into contact, Going away from that touchline, very good play there. Moving it to the forwards, they're going to take it up. Ooh, little, slight little juggle there. Oh, it's stolen. And, oh, 
Got it out. Uh, is that Ben Chang again with yeah. the steal? Very good steal. Yeah. He's been, he, I've noticed he's playing very well at a, in this hooker position. He's a very mobile hooker. Yeah, very. And he looks he looks uh, very, very fit and in good nick. So those are good signs for the HPC side. There's Sean D'Souza and Marvin Chirume. Um, they've done an amazing job, haven't they, over the last couple of years with these junior, junior boys? Yeah, they have done so. And sadly that they're on the sideline because it's always nice to have them in the comm box with us. Um, Last night, Sean, going through our footage, he said we, he, he had a lot of stuff that he wanted to pass on to the players and watched the OG's game, analysed it, and yeah, and just getting ready for this OG's tournament, this game now. He's doing a lot of preparation in it. Yeah. And let's just chat a bit about the, the banner in the background there. Um, Ian, every athlete has a right to, to clean sports, say no to doping. It's kind of taken the sporting world by, by force, hey, doping athletes, trying to enhance performance by taking um, illegal drugs. What, what would you say to aspiring athletes that may be watching this? Don't. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> Simple as that. It's, it's, you're going to affect your future. Yeah. Because if you get caught, you're going to then have a negative um, sort of mark on your record. Mm. And then you're going to be sort of targeted each time now. Yeah. When there's a random, random, I say random with air quotes, mm. drug test, it's usually going to be your name getting picked mm. out. And then because you are now an offender, they've got the right to always check you and then somebody else. Yeah. And the best, I would say the best way to, to, to be the best you can be is to work hard. Train, do the extra hours, um, work hard and yeah, say no to drugs for sure. Um, HPC, Jillian Jericha there flung to the ground, but uh, Panasha Zuzu is there to clean up. Second line there, Muchengeti has been brilliant today so far. He cuts back in again, the winger. Oh, he beats two, beats three. He's still on his feet, beats four. Let's it up the back door. Oh, they're just playing some good rugby when they have go forward ball here. Oh, the HPC boys. But that double whistle again. I think someone's going to the bin now, Ian. Talents had enough. Yep, to the pocket. Off you go. Is that red or? Oh, it's yellow. Yellow. Point to get the number six. Um, I don't think he was in much of the play. He's, he's confused. He yeah. he's doesn't know what happened. Yeah. Anyway, he's <laughs> has to sit for ten. <laughs> yeah, uh, back on the naughty chair. Yeah. Uh, we'll see him in ten minutes. And HBC, true to fashion, going for poles. Yep. Getting that scoreboard pressure on OG's side. Yep. Into double figures. That's a good psychological uh, boost for them. Well, not yet into double figures. Yeah, if, if he gets it in touch wood. <laughs> I'm not touching wood. I'm going for the OGs. Oh, in this he, game. Okay, he is getting it in. So commentator's curse <laughs> is going on. Yeah, um, but yeah, I don't have any salt to sprinkle over the screen. Um, <laughs> so I'll tell you a classic example of uh, commentator's curse. David Warner's batting. He's on 90, 99. Mark Nicholas and Shane Warner in the commentary box. Mark Nicholas says... David Warner has never been dismissed in, in the 90s. <laughs> the very next ball, out. <laughs> Shane Warner is like, why did you say that? <laughs> I, I saw that one. Did but you see that? Yeah, Shane Warner, <laughs> as soon as he said it, was he left the commentary box and he just was like, I'm done. So um, com no commentators curse for me. Huh? It's, yeah. it's 12. Oh, that's a pity. <laughs> such a pity. Um, but yeah, OG is now with the man down in this... Um, but you are going back to that uh, David uh, Shane Warne thing. Oh, <laughs> it was hilarious. It just made me laugh so hard. His face, and he was just fuming. <laughs> I wonder what David Warner said to him after oh, that. <laughs> I don't think he would have spoken to him for like a month. <laughs> but do you think it's is it just superstition, or it actually there is such a thing as commentators curse? I think it's both. Like you can have. Uh, yeah, because sometimes it happens and you're just like, how? As soon as <laughs> oh, I've said it. There's a big boy. There's Huntley with a good offload here to Ben Chang, but unable to get it to hand. Um, Huntley playing some good um, a little uh, play there, getting through the tackle and then straight away looking for the offload, looking for the faster player. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely not the best um, rugby we've seen in this game so far, Ian. But there have been glimpses of really, really good rugby and also really, really poor rugby. I mean, handling, 
uh, the defense, but but it's good signs, good signs. Yeah, it's it's sort of been the story of the day today with the, the amount of knock-on scrums, forward passes, like we've seen guys tap tap and go and then pass it forward straight away. As OGs with a good platform, nice little trick move here, managing to get the off to the try scorer Kuda, um, Chiwanza, taken into contact, manages to get his knees on the floor. Carlos running a little bit laterally, looking for the runner there. Some good steps here, but no momentum coming here for OGs. They're they playing themselves backwards. Yeah, not looking very good. Someone eventually says, okay, I'm going to go forward here. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what a steal. What a steal. So that was, uh, everyone just stopped and looked at the ref there. Two on one here. Nice little pass. And Carlos dots it down under the poles. That, that came from people not playing to the whistle. Yeah. Not playing to the whistle. Um, there was a little instant. I think the OGs guys kicked it out of their own ruck. Um, thinking that the whistle would go HBC, knock it on. Looking at the ref, asking for the, the both sided knock on. And OGs are able to run it through under the poles. And that could level up the scores. I'm not going to say it will. <laughs> since we've been talking about the commentator's curse. As we can see, Kuda chatting to talent there in the background. Um, uh, it could be a little bit more uh, talk, seeing as they've probably played with each other a lot over the years. Uh, Kuda being captain of OGs now, uh, talent being so experienced, he's probably refed him for about 10, 15 years. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're still waiting on talent to come back. Uh, probably still chatting to Kuda to ex sort of explain what has happened in the last sort of play and sort of also the yellow card. Um, why he wasn't too happy about it. Oh, he's dropping. He's drop kicking. No kicking tee needed. It's right in front. I can do this all day long. Yeah. See, he kicked it very high that time. <laughs> and straight over. Now, uh, OG's with 12, HBC with 12. Um, just like that. Okay. And as we see the replay here, you see how he knocked it out. Lost the ball and tackle. Everyone stops to look. And... Two on one situation, you have very well delayed pass, nearly didn't make it to hand, and Carlos is able to dot down on the side of the post. That was a weird way to dot the ball down. Eh? <laughs> yeah. What was that? So that uh, brings us to the halftime of this game. Scores are locked at 12 12. HPC did well. Some cloud building up here at Harare Sports Club. Hopefully, the rain stays away. We had a bit of lightning and thunder last night. Uh, and this play had to be stopped, but uh, don't go too far away. Join us for the second half in just a bit.
Welcome back to the second half. HPC under 20 versus Old Georgian Sports Club. Scores are level at 12 apiece, so not much to separate the two teams at all. But uh, it's all to play for in this uh, second half. Ian, how do you see this one swinging? I think OGs are going to step up their play. Um, I think they're still down to 14 men on the field um, with that yellow card, which uh, bemused him. But uh, looking back at it, he was offside and they had been warned. Um, HBC, I think they're going to look at trying to retain this kickoff or steal it from OGs. OGs will look at playing their natural flair rugby um, and sort of break down uh, the under 20s. Yep, uh, it's been kicked off by HPC. Oh, good kick chase there. Almost uh, flattens him, but does well to evade that tackle. It's set up just uh, three meters ahead of the 22 in the old Georgians' half. They're going to go for safety here. He gets it upfield. Very, very high. Panache Zuse under the ball. Not much of a kick chase there, surprisingly, Ian. Maybe they all thought it was going into touch. Not much wind here. And he spots a gap. Good counter-attack. Loses his footing, but the support is there. Panache Zuse trying a Kudachi one's a little dink as he did in the first half. Oh, he's trying to sidestep uh, his way out of trouble there, but Panache does well to rip it out of contact there. And here they go. Good tackle. Taken down uh, 10 meters short of the line. Um, very slow uh, rack speed here. Um, look at using the big boys again, but it looks like OGs is matching them blow for blow. They've been driven back to their 22 and it's been stolen by all Georgians here. Very well played and Carlos box kicks it down to the um, under 20s 10 meter. They can attack, but as you said, no sort of chase given by OGs at the moment. Um, and the under 20s can just run it back up the field. Passes it to Ben Chang, who will take it into contact. He's been solid throughout this game, taking up those contacts, taking those hits, and getting over the game line. He has indeed very good player, Chang, and uh, he's, he's been very, very mobile, like you said. Good on line-out time as well and with ball in hand. But oof, it's knocked on, and he was pummeled there. He was absolutely flattened. Sadly, he's down, so we're going to probably have to get the medics on. It looks like it might be... Uh, slight head, in, head injury here. Um, the medics have been very, very um, critical on their head injuries throughout the de uh, throughout this net bank challenge. Um, we've seen once or twice they've actually st stopped a game because they've noticed a player not acting usually, and that's that's like in you talk about the rugby world cup as we see the replay coming up here. Breaks through the first tackle there nicely um, as it goes out the ruck to the player, drops it on, and he's hit very hard. I think it's that whiplash from the hit um, where he's not hit his head on the floor. Um, still done, but going back to that point of the Rugby World Cup, we have, uh, especially in Japan, they had an independent um, doctor. I think it's a neurosurgeon at, on, uh, at the game. If he noticed there was a, a change or potential head contact he would tell the 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 refs and then they would change it it was quite a big hit eh? we're going to have a look at that one again it was oh just that whiplash you mentioned in mm. he actually didn't control the ball well enough but that tackle there he knocked yeah. on the ball legal tackle nothing wrong with nothing the actual tackle that. wraps his arms around brings him to ground at this point there there it's that Boom. there that hit it's that whiplash of hitting there going there bang oh. And then he's, that momentum has taken him back over. So it's that impact of the hit and then that whiplash onto the floor. And even though it's on grass, it's still very, very sore. Oh, no, it's sore. It's very painful. As we can see, the spine board being brought out, every precaution being taken here by the medics. Um, we can see uh, the EMT here. He is very, very experienced. He's been in the job for over 40 years, so he knows what he's doing. Um, very experienced guy. No, unlucky for him, eh? Um, hopefully he'll be not out for too long because mm. Sean will be definitely needing all, all of these guys, uh, you know, for, for, for his squad. A lot of them are, who are available for selection are at universities around the world, so they'll be there to strengthen this squad as well. But it's good that these guys are getting 
game time and experience and you know just getting that match awareness and match fit really it's very important yeah it is very important and like you mentioned a lot of these youngsters will probably go be going to university in the next couple of weeks couple of months and that you sean's going to lose that um, core unit who he can have training once a week twice a week until the bar test trophy and then you've got to pull them all back a month before and basically restart um, and get back to your stru the structure you want to play because when you go um, to your universities you end up playing for your teams and you're learning their structures now you've got to come and uh, adapt to somebody else's structure mm. yep, you're right there Ian um, but as long as I, don't, I think I don't think Sean would mind too much about universities doing their own game structures whatever as long as his players stay injury free I think that'll be his main concern because you don't want um, players to be oh, let's check the hugs all around there Panache is enjoying the music that's in the <laughs> background um, I'm also vibing to it here it's a nice nice yeah. little tune there hey, Ian? <laughs> yeah I'm very thankful that Netbank were able to come on board for this um, they put together a brilliant showcase uh, this weekend as we see uh, all the players giving him a, a clap. Uh, hopefully he's all good um, and we'll be able to see him on the field soon. Yeah, very sad. Never never nice to see players getting stretched off the field. Um, oh, poor, poor lad. But it is the nature of the game, isn't it? It's not nice. The tackle was legal. Nothing mm. wrong with it. It's just the way he fell. Yeah. And the player who tackled him must be feeling quite bad. But it's like we said, it's the nature of the game. Yeah, there was nothing malicious, legal in illegal in that tackle very good tackle it's just how it happened how he landed um, nothing he could have really done about that um, but how is there a way to train your players to sort of take that impact I know in like martial arts you are trained how to hit the floor to sort of stop the shock uh, on your head um, how would you then implement that into rugby um, geez, uh, interesting question. I actually don't know if I'll be able to answer this well, but um, maybe a scrum cap could do some form of absorbing of that contact, but the way he was hit, the way he fell, I don't think he could have done anything uh, about that whiplash, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, as we see, OG is now breaking out of play. Very loose pass here, which has gone forward. Um, story of this half so far is they... they getting over the game line, they're getting the good ball, but it's just one loose pass, one forward pass, one knock on. Um, and they're not getting back to that consistency. Yep, they're not. And uh, that's, that's, that's causing the start-stop rugby that we've pretty much seen for the last 47 minutes, Ian. Um, there hasn't been a full play. Oh, the, the yellow card is back on. Um, he'll be wanting definitely to stay on side because <laughs> if he goes offside again... So, could be a red card there. <laughs> yellow yeah. card, red card. Yep. Um, so I think he's going to just stay out of Talent's eye line there for <laughs> quite a while, or even the hours eye line. Um, but would it, would you take him off, uh, seeing him that he's got a yellow card, you're a flank, you, you are needed, um, and Talent being sort of very strict on the cards in these games, would you take him off earlier now? No, I wouldn't take him off earlier, but I would just ask him to be disciplined. Um, because he, and, and he'll know himself that anything else here, yeah, if he gets uh, talent annoyed, he's off. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah. So I think it's different from soccer where you want to protect the player, um, get him off, you know, if he got, got a yellow card, you want to save him for next matches or whatever. Rugby, just be disciplined, simple. <laughs> you can see quite a few of the under-20s players are starting to blow a little bit there. Um, that recovery time, that 12-hour recovery time, Still affecting the players here. As you can see, a lot more knock-ons in day two than compared to day one. Um, hopefully now OGs can... They've got a good structure from the scrum. They've got some good players, as you said, cheaters, but a tight edge here and the under-20s winning the scrum. Eighth man break here. Manages to get a, uh, a tackle here. And I see that under-20s are going to go for poles here. Yep, why not uh, give it a give it a go? Uh, get back uh, that three-point lead that they had in the first half. But uh, is he? Yep, I yeah, think they're is. going for poles. Yeah. Going to um. kick it to the tennis courts, I think. <laughs> yeah, probably over the tennis yeah. courts is the way are they kicking it. 
Do you think they've got the ball back from um, Royal Golf Club yet? Uh, that's if they found it. Yeah. yeah. Probably in, in the 18th hole. Yeah. Or the 19th hole, if you <laughs> get my meaning there. Yeah. <laughs> As we see him lining up for the kick. Um, but just going back to that, uh, OGs were dominant in the scrum first half. HPC with a very good scrum here, putting a lot of pressure on the OGs players and winning the scrum. Now you've got a, a chance to knock over three points um, to regain that lead. OGs haven't been in the lead yet. Um, HPC very happy just to knock over the points. Yeah, very happy. Check out how he kicks that thing. I'm <laughs> telling you, Ian. And he's missed it. See, yeah. probably it probably went over, but it was too high for the AR to even know. Yeah. <laughs> to even tell if it was <laughs> over or not. Um, but a 22-meter dropout here for OGs. Um, I, they did do a very sneaky 22 dropout uh, yesterday where they just dabbed it over the line and it worked it all the way up to the field and scored a try. So, But HBC away to that threat. Good kick downfield here. Knocked backwards, which is fine. That's why they're playing on Panache Azusa, playing in the fly-off position there. But uh, trying to keep the ball alive. So far, so good for them. The HPC side, good ball continuity. Oh, Jackler gets in there. But uh, referee says, chirping. Mm. It's not going to take any of that. Eh? Yeah, talent doesn't take any of that. Oh. And you... you you're trading a tight line there, a uh, tight rope with back chatting talent, because he's gonna then get you on your radar. He's gonna you're gonna put your team on the under the microscope now. Mm. Um, so not the best thing, but yes, you could be in his corner saying that was holding on, um, but yeah, you can't do that to the ref. You can't back chat him. Uh, still going at it with talent, uh, but talent <laughs> won't change his mind. You'll probably explain it. And then you, as the rugby player, have to then uh, take it on the chin, in a sense, and get on with your game. Mm. Get it out of your mind. Um, OGs with the scrum down here. Their last one didn't go to plan. Uh, let's see if they can get it out quickly, either clear their lines, or they're going to uh, try run it out from the back. I think they'll try and clear here. Um, Ian, it's not uh, worth playing. In your so own deep half. in your own half. Yeah. Oh, not a good but pass. a very bad pass there by Carlos. Manages to get that ball out, but still no pressure being put on the kicker. A decent chase here. Managing to hold his own here against the youngster. Great tackle, great diving tackle. And Carlos over the ball, but taken off straight away. Using the blind hand, down the blind hand side. Great dummy there. Gets the offload, but knocks it on but uh, tackled without the ball. Yep, another good passage of play there from the HPC side. Uh, doesn't result in points though, Ian. Mm. Um, so all those good plays, but if they don't result in points, then what's the point really? <laughs> yeah, now they're not going to go for poles. I think it's a little bit out, out of his radar range, um, not his distance range, but go to the corner, set up a, a mall, uh, get your forwards into it, and then try rumble over for a try. Yep, some fresh legs here from HPC. It looks like Tawana Ishema Pani. He's come on in the fullback position. And he's gone and kicked it into the tobacco stands. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's going to take a while to get that ball back. Oh, my word. I wonder how many balls they've gone through this weekend. Oh, there's, maybe that's the one back from Royal. <laughs> <laughs> or the tennis courts. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing, you're just going to see it pop over the wall from the tobacco stands there and affect the game. But unfortunately, not able to capitalize on their own line out here. Um, knock on, another knock on. Um, sorry, I just had to say it like that. But <laughs> it's it's become too stop and start at the moment. Um, you, you, they're not getting through their phases. They're getting through two or three phases. And then there's either handing or a penalty. So there isn't that continuity of the play. Yeah, there isn't. Eh? It's just start, stop, stop. Um Fatigue, eh? fatigue does get to you. That turnaround we've spoken about doesn't sound like a broken record, but back-to-back -back 15s rugby is it's tough. Mm, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a very good tournament so far. We've seen some ve uh, 
brilliant rugby here. Um, OG is on their own five. Hopefully they won't get pushed over, concede a penalty. Their, their scrum being put under huge amounts of pressure here, but able to get it out. Carlos um, taken down outside his five meter. Manages to get the clearance away. Has it found touch? No, it hasn't. Ooh, very good take there. Taking it over his shoulder. Sort of miscalculated it there. Running um, backwards no, as well. Yeah. No sort of press from OGs from the kicks. Um, I think Bruce may be able to, will be getting frustrated with that. We saw OGs in the, in the under 20s. Their pressing game was very good after the kick. Their chasing speed. Um, under 20s now shipping it down to the outside player. Not able to get the offload, but pops it off the floor. Oh. Creating that game line and very good pass off the floor. Try time under 20s. Oh, that is just brilliant. Offload there from um, Al Al Alex Nyamunda, I think his name is, um, the number 12. He doesn't, he doesn't just have that uh, powerful running. He's also got that offload game and that try is just all thanks to him. Uh, obviously, the supporting run was important as well, but what an offload sets Nakairo Benoni for, for an easy try there. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. It's like they getting into contact and looking for the offload. Uh, he was on the floor. Um, he was going to get. He was isolated, but managed to get the ball off the floor into hands, and getting that, keeping that forward momentum going. Um, you, you not, um, trying to look for the words. Yeah, <laughs> you're taking the defenders out of play when you keeping the ball off the floor, off the ruck, mm. out of the ruck. You. You're getting them onto the back foot, and it's a lot harder to tackle when you're running backwards than running forwards. Yep. As you see him lining up for the kick here, um, unable to get his uh, last penalty. Um, this is to take it for a seven-point ball game with about, I'd say about 15 minutes left. 15, 20 minutes left in this game. And has he got it? Yes, he has. And that brings the scores to 19-12. The under-20s playing a very good game here. Let's see how OGs can uh, react. As we see the replay here, see, he's taken taken to the floor here. Nobody around. Pops it up to the uh, supporting player. There. Offload yeah. in the tackle. There we go. That's what I was talking about. That keeping it off the floor. Can I tell you what that is? Be a beautiful. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is absolutely unbelievable. That is beautiful. that is a you know what that off who that offload reminds me of, Brody Retallick. Those are his freakish offloads. He's like tackled and somehow he just frees the ball up. Brody Retallick, we've got our own here in the HPC side. Or even the Fi any Fijian. Yeah, any yeah, Fijian. Or s th those guys are just unbelievable. At just it is. It's actually freakish how they do that. The yeah. Fijian, especially their sevens team. Yeah. And it's so natural to them. As we see the uh, under-20s getting their ruck. Oh. It's a pleasure to watch though, isn't it? Offloads yeah. like that. Exactly. And another penalty advantage Shadrick. for not being 10. Gets away from the first tackler. Gets the offload off. Under-20s now on the rampage here. He's got a two-on-one. Decides to go for the dummy. Tackled by Carlos, but straight away the ball is off the deck. Looking for players on the left. Big skip pass out here to the Sigalke. left. Okay. Oh. Brilliant tackle out into the, the big set of bags there. But another penalty coming here against OGs. Uh, discipline le letting them down here a bit. From their own 10 meter, OGs are now uh, on their own 5. These lighties can play, Ian. These boys can play rugby, I'll tell you what. And they're going to keep getting better and better. And it's exciting to, to, to see. The, the thought excites me. Give them two, three months. How are they going to be playing rugby, these boys? Exciting rugby. Exciting ex attack right now. Oh, oh! 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 Just get it to hand, buddy. That was so close. I think if the winner, winger was a little bit more aware, it would have been an unbelievable try. Oh. But we see here, um, Talent now talking to the OGs players again. Um, just giving a sort of another final team warning. Um... Because I think we could see, if OGs carry on this way, another person getting a yellow. Yeah, yeah, um, discipline. As we see, there we go, yellow card, talent. 
I think he's. I think that was more for talking back. Um, as you can see, the player is not too happy about it. He can fling his arms as much as he wants. He's going to sit on the chair. <laughs> All that could eventually do is change that yellow into a red. Yeah. 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 Um, if talent sees it's directed still at him. Um, Tell you what, there are some massive boys warming up in the background. Gee, there. That's going to be goodness. an unbelievable game. Sure. There are some big boys there. <laughs> I'm glad I've, I've sort of given up rugby. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather just play touch. We're always part of the game, oh, one yeah. way or another. Yeah. Even if you support Ireland, you're still very <laughs> much part of the game. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything bad on TV now, just do because you're a box supporter. Do you, do you reckon uh, Sexton will still be playing at 70? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I think he might give it another four years. Eh? <laughs> That's got white hair, eh? no jokes. Eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I saw that picture. Uh, like <laughs> 2044, Johnny Sexton debates whether to retire. <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, I saw that as well. It was, it was brilliant. But a legend of the game. Oh, yeah. Absolute legend. He's now the top, as we see the under-20s, um, getting very close to the line. They're going to go back. Great step onto his left. Unable to get over the line. Sure. Goes for the reach. Dragged back. And try time under 20s. Very good play there. Now they're putting uh, old Georgians to the sword. Yeah, not good uh, defense there around the fringes of the breakdown. you you got to have your rock pillar and post defenders right there in the three-point stance, down on one knee, on the try line. You've got to make sure you do that. There's a player down in the, in the back there from HBC, but... Uh, Shadrick Mandaza shows his class, shows his nippiness, if I can say that, around the edges there. They don't have a problem of scrum-offs, do they, Sean and his, and his men? No, I think they've got an abundance of talent in that under-20 side. You look at um, Shadrick, and then you've got a couple and of the OGs. Mm -hmm. yeah. a lot, he had a very good pool of players to pick from. Um, as we go back to the replay here, taking the ball up close to the line, um, unable to get it over. Defense not quite organized here. Manages to drag the player back just before as he was reaching for the line. But simply over the line. Could you call that um, obstruction there? No. No, no obstruction there. No obstruction. I think that's a clean try. Um, it did look like that player was sort of in, impeding the other tackler. Well, if you want to. Say it that way, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so then technically, but we've got All the right, luck so of the shall, replay. Shall we call no try? So, shall we? Shall, can I run on and tell talent? Yeah, yeah, please go <laughs> run on and tell talent right now. He'll just look at you and tell you to get off the field. As you oh. see, a very good take here, managing to keep it in, but passes it forward. So, scrum down to OGs. Let's see how they can manage to pull this game back into their grips. Yep, and uh, uh, now it's a very, very healthy lead that HPC have. They're on 26 and uh, OG's 12, so mm, very, 14. very healthy lead, yeah. Jeez, your maths is good. You just worked it out like that, 14. <laughs> oh, I was still th counting fingers and toes. <laughs> and, I know, and that's that Falcon College education oh, coming through. Please. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, please. You mean Falcon, is that the school that lost to Hellenic last year? Mm. <laughs> right, I'm just going to leave the call box now. I'll let you do this all by yourself. Well... I heard the excuse that wasn't the Craven Week guys away and blah, blah, blah. But hey, a loss is a loss. Eh? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. still a loss in the in the column. Yeah. Um, but hey, it's it's good for the development of rugby. Absolutely. And it'll be brilliant to see a couple more Falcon losses next 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 season. <laughs> uh, that won't be nice as we see Carlos passing it, fizzing it out oh, wide. The inside pass was on there. Yeah, it was. But unfortunately, taken down to the ruck. Carlos quickly to the ball. Great dummy here, setting up the ruck. Ruck speed is very good by OGs at the moment. They're coming here, the dragons are coming. Firepower here. Like the color on their jerseys, they are going red hot at the moment. They've got the penalty advantage. Linking up nicely, tried to offload it there, but a clean pickup for Kuda Chiwanza. Sends it out to the right. Managing, Do they keep it oh. in play? No, they don't. But they had a penalty advantage, luckily for them. OGs are getting very dangerous if they can keep their phases going and build up that pressure their rack speed is very quick and i think that's all down to carlos and he's as soon as he's there he's looking for that pass he's already made up his mind on where he's going to pass it 
before he even gets to the ruck. As I think we see they're going to do a tap and go. Tap and go here to the big boys. Met up here by Huntley. Huntley manages to bring him down. Look here going blind with the big boys. He needs to roll. Yeah. He, does, he does well to roll. They're pursuing the left side here. Yeah. Well, Changing uh, maybe a little bit of a change of pace here. Running sideways. Uh, running in front of the player, behind his player, causing the obstruction. That's a little bit of indecision there by OGs. Yeah, not good. <laughs> that's, the, that, that's what happens when you don't run straight. Mm. Um, you've got to. I always tell the kids that I coach, you can take a thousand steps to the side, but if I take one forward, I've done better than you on the rugby field. Oh, uh, yeah, mm. for sure. And that's, that's uh, a good point here yeah, because they've now lost 25 meters. Yep, so they've uh, kicked it upfield. It'll be their line-out on the halfway line. Line-outs haven't been good from both sides this game, Ian. Yeah, for sure. Um, Huntley going up, receives it, manages to set up the mall. Uh, great mall set up here by the under-20s. OG's trying to trying to affect a turn of, uh, or stop it in a sense. Um, but the under-20s managed to break away, set up the ruck, um, and keep it going forward. Yep, patience is the name of the game. They just need to be patient, work the ball. Looks like OGs have caused some form of upset. Yep, yep, they have. So it's turnover. So good down uh, more defense there from OGs. Now they've got to make use of it because they are trailing by 14 points. Eh? Maybe the youngsters can uh, get one on the big boys here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were saying that yesterday, and then look what happened. OH managed to pip it in the last minute. <laughs> Thanks to Takudza Musingrini with that breakaway try. Yeah. Oh, Unbelievable game yesterday, wasn't it? But as we see here, OGs, hopefully they can get their um, back line sorted and get the front four ball, break the game line, um, and keep the, the play flowing, uh, keep it moving up the field. Because they haven't been able to keep those phases going. Yeah, on either side have, actually. It's been start-stop. We've seen a lot of scrums from knock-ons and... That kind of thing. But here goes a good step on the inside for OGs. A little bit isolated. They need to pounce. And he's been told to leave it now. Just got there a little bit too late. But the opportunity was there to jackal that ball. Knock on advantage. Full arm penalty. Offside. So again, the discipline there lacking from HPC. Yeah, I think this is where Kuda's got to step in and tell him to kick it up the field. Uh, not to run, try and run it all the way. Um, you can get the easy meters up. Now you just got to put the trust in your hooker and your forwards to win the line out back to get you good front four ball. And it is a very good kick. It's taken play just a meter inside the HPC 22. So good field position. They need to make use of this and make sure they score a try because they are running out of time to get back into this one. Um, Sean D'Souza will definitely be the happier coach at the moment. Yeah, time is certainly not on the OG side. They have to score in this next minute or this next sort of plays to have any hope of um, winning this game. But unfortunately, aren't able to retain their own line out. Yep, turnover straight away, as we say that commentator's curse, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, but here go HPC clearing their lines. Looks like a big hit here by the players uh, who was charging down, trying to charge down the kick. Um, no meterage made there from that kick, unfortunately. Yeah, it looked like it went very far, but it was far from far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another attempt here for OGs. Uh, Line-out wasn't really organized there. And they've lost another. Oh, no, they haven't. They managed to steal it back, um, gaining a few meters. Nice variation on the line-out there. Mm. Almost paid, uh, paid for them there. Just a desperate tackle in the end, but... They still have the ball. Carlos Matema Tema sends it. One more pass you'd fancy here, and there's a try. They do just that. Easy as you like. Ooh. And a great try, diving try. Yeah, brilliant try from OGs. But uh, is it a little too late for them, uh, Ian? What do you reckon here, buddy? I think it might be. Um, but very good play here from the, the ruck. Fizzing it out very quickly, and then getting it to Kuda Chuanza, who makes the decision to... Uh, go one-on-one -on -one and then pass it out to the to the winger who dives over the, in, the, in the corner. 
diving like he's diving into a swimming pool. He just dotted <laughs> down, man. Jeez. The ash splash. Oh, my word. Nice. You got to do it in front of the crowd. Maybe his honey is there in the crowd. <laughs> honey, later she'll be like, honey, that dive was brilliant. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this conversion is very crucial for OGs because it still keeps it down to a, a, a one score game. Yeah, uh, very crucial. You're right, Ian. They do need to slot this over. Wouldn't fancy there's too much time left in this game. Mm, mm. Um, but very important conversion. Yeah. Because if he misses this, it in essence means you need to have two tries now. Um, so He may have missed the polls, but he definitely got one person in the crowd there. <laughs> he wasn't watching the game. Yeah, well, I'm, we're going to have a look at that dive again. Inspirational dive. Look at the hands. Number five sends a long ball. Got into the hands of young Musumi. He sends it out to the... Just have a look at this, folks. Look at that. Oh, absolutely brilliant. I'll give that a 9 out of 10. I'll give it a 10, but mm. that was a dive of note. I absolutely know. brilliant. Ash Splash is always a 10 out of 10. <laughs> brilliant, uh, but well worked try there, definitely, from OGs. That's what they would have wanted to do a lot more in this game, but uh, looks like they do have time. They score, and now they need to score twice, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Score twice, uh, Five, a seven pointer and maybe a three pointer will, will do. Yeah, for sure. Um, they've got a lot of work to do. Uh, yeah, so the score is now 26 17 um, to OGs. They are nine points behind. So, Nine points, yeah, nine points. My maths is uh, helping me there. Falcon boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Carlos showing his class there. Step off right, step off left, step off right. Almost like he's doing a drill on the field, going through uh, cones there. A little dink over the top, straight Went into straight touch. Straight into touch. So it'll be line out ball here for all Georgians in the background there. You can see the Sportivo as they're known, Harare Sports Club, getting ready to take on Marasta as they're known here. That's old Hararian Sports Club. But for now it is HPC under 20 playing against all Georgians. And guess what? The scoreline is 26 points to 17 in favor of the youngsters. So they've done well. They came off a disappointing last uh, second loss uh, yesterday, last night. Old Hararians just scoring a try in the last play of the game. But today, clearly they've taken the lessons from that uh, game yesterday. And they have managed this game a lot better. And they've scored more points than they did yesterday. And they're looking to clear their lines now. That is a good kick turning the defense and bounces infield. Oh, this is a brilliant kick chase. Pressure here on, on young Mushumi. Oh, he handles it quite well. Oh, little shimmy and go. It's his turn to dash upfield now. Mushumi is a bit isolated. Yeah, they can snap onto this ball. Uh, support does come, but they are over the ball. Ian, good uh, kick chase there, but uh, unfortunately not managing to stop them deeper in their half. Yeah, for sure. But um, the under 20 is now a little bit jaded here, unable to get um, their defensive line in structure which is giving OGs the chance to just run it back up the field. Um, still no sort of structure uh, being formed here, but it looks like they might have been able to turn over the ball, not playing to the whistle as we saw in the first half. Um, OGs here can just fizz it out to the right, to the oh, right. Plenty of numbers. Kura, he's going to take it under the poles. Try time here to take it to 22-26. Uh, these youngsters are tired, Ian. You can see that, that they're taking in deep breaths. They are tired, and OGs just need to use that. And guess oh. what? It's time up. <laughs> oh. Referee, can't you give us two more minutes, please? Called it 26 to 24 with that uh, final conversion going over, um, but just a little bit too late. Yeah. Well, that wraps up this game. HPC under 20 bouncing back strong on day two of the NetBank Challenge Cup. They beat O Georgians 26 points to 24. Thanks for joining us and we'll be back shortly with the final game of the day.